Composable Action Condition Predictors, Flexible Off-Policy Learning for Robot Navigation. Reinforcement learning methods consist of two phases, a training phase, in which control policy is learned from data, and a test phase, in which the control policy is deployed in the environment. Standard reinforcement learning methods typically work as follows. First, the robot gathers data in the environment according to its current policy. A human then labels the reward signal, which tells the robot what it should do, such as to avoid collisions. This data is then used to train a control policy, which in turn is used to gather even more data, and the reinforcement learning cycle continues on. At test time, the policy can then be deployed for the specified task. If you want your robot to accomplish a different task, you would then specify a different reward function and repeat this process again and again and again. The standard reinforcement learning paradigm is data inefficient because each control policy has to be retrained from scratch, is human dependent because the human has to label the data with the reward, and is inflexible because each control policy can only accomplish a single task. Our composable action condition predictors approach seeks to address these shortcomings. First, in the training phase, the robot gathers data in the environment using any control policy. Then, the CAP system autonomously labels relevant event cues in the dataset. The data is then used to train the CAPS model. Using the single CAPS model, the engineer can then specify a variety of tasks in terms of the event cues, and the robot will plan and execute actions that maximize this reward function. CAPS is data efficient because all data gathered by the robot can be used, autonomous because CAPS self-labels the event cues, and flexible because the desired task can be specified at test time. CAPS has three distinct phases, predict, label, and control. At the core of CAPS is a learned predictive model. The predictive model takes as input the current state, such as the onboard camera image, and a sequence of H future actions, such as steering angles, to produce H latent states. From each of these latent states, the model predicts the future values of the event cues, which might include if the robot will collide, what its heading is, and whether it sees a door. This model is instantiated as a deep neural network. However, in order to train this model, CAPS needs labels for the event cues. CAPS uses a fully autonomous, self-supervised approach for generating these labels. Let's consider a specific example with three event cues, collision, heading, and door. The collision and heading labels can be self-supervised directly using the robot's bumper and compass sensors. However, the robot does not have a door sensor. We therefore use a pre-trained computer vision system to label door based on the onboard camera images. In summary, no human is required to continuously label the dataset. The only human effort required is to label and train the detection systems, which requires substantially less effort. Given the trained CAPS model, the engineer can then specify what task it wants the robot to accomplish in terms of the event cues. The robot can then plan and execute actions that maximize this reward function. We now present experimental results. We first consider autonomous driving in the Carla simulator. Data was gathered by running deep cue learning for the sole task of collision avoidance. Using this data set, the following event cues were labeled. Collision, speed, heading, if the right lane is visible, and the distance of the right lane to the center of the image. The CAPS model was then trained to predict these event cues. To highlight the flexibility of CAPS, we used the same CAPS model to accomplish two different tasks. As you can see, the CAPS policy on the left drives in both lanes, while the CAPS policy on the right drives only in the right lane, showing that CAPS can achieve different policy behaviors at test time. We now show our CAPS approach accomplishing a goal-directed navigation task. The car's reward function is to avoid collisions, drive at 7 meters per second, stay in the right lane, and drive in the direction of the specified goal location, shown as a colored square on the map. Compared to goal-conditioned deep cue learning and goal-conditioned deep cue learning with separate value functions, 
our approach is better able to accomplish the navigation task. We now present results using a real-world RC car. The RC car has multiple sensors, including a camera, collision bumper, compass, and wheel encoder. It is controlled by setting the steering angle and motor torque. All computation is done on board using an NVIDIA Jetson TX2. Data was gathered on the fifth floor of Corey Hall at UC Berkeley using a partially trained collision avoidance policy with exploration noise added to the actions. 11 hours of data was gathered, corresponding to 150,000 data points. Using this data set, the following event cues were labeled, collision, heading, and the fraction of the image that was a door. The CAPS model was then trained to predict these event cues. We first compared our CAPS approach with deep cue learning on a pure collision avoidance task. As you can see, both CAPS and DQL are able to successfully navigate the full length of the hallway. However, only CAPS is able to accomplish the multi-objective, goal-directed navigation task of avoiding collisions, following specified goal headings, and moving towards doors. We have presented CAPS, a data-efficient, autonomous, and flexible learning-based approach for robot navigation. Thank you for watching.